What m- 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 this way? What is fiction? What is fascinated? This is the story of Christian. On August 9, 2020, after Chris Chan followers expressed concern over the leaked video in which Sona Chu, while allegedly possessing Christine's body, states what arrangements are to be made regarding her possessions in the event Chris ceased to exist in the real world dimension, the alleged Sona Chu wrote a couplet of reassuring tweets. Hey y'all, simple clarification if a certain new rumor, if you have not heard, do not worry or go looking into it. Simple and direct. Barb and I are safe, well, and okay. In the sequence of events, this was timed as a think-ahead moment for this timeline. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt emojis. Now, after reading all of that and this, what are you feeling right now? If you feel a good and calm sensation, you will have a lucky and blessed day today. Otherwise, if you feel weirded out, consider yourselves blessed your day is remaining neutral after this moment. On August 10th, Not, veritable leader of the The Place Discord server, joined the recently founded official Quickie Discord server, meant for general discussion of Chris Chan, and proceeded to leak many private photos and correspondences that Christine and later Sonachu shared privately with members of The Place. Not soon after invited the alleged Sonachu to the Quickie server as well, who quickly joined for himself. Over on the The Place server, Sonichu asked the other members there what to say on the Quickie server, since he was told that there would be people who would be willing to serve him. Upon perusing the Quickie server some further, Sonichu found photos of writings meant for Chris's friend Kai, which were sent to him privately, expressing his annoyance at seeing them leaked on Discord. Other members reasoned the leak came about because Kai was a dumbass. Sonachu agreed, but clarified that he was a good kind of dumbass, who possessed powers and abilities that were allegedly personally verified. Two days later, the purported Sonachu made a public announcement on the Quickie server, letting everyone know that he was not only busy with dealings concerning the dimensional merge, but also planning to bring Christine's body into Dimension C-197 and later travel back in time to prevent the COVID-19 pandemic from ever happening. He also asked for everyone to speak with him and treat him with sincerity and honesty, claiming he did not support neat behavior, derogatorily referring to those not in employment, education or training. On August 14th, moderators of the Quickie Discord decided to remove and ban Christine's account from the server, noting that their original aim, like that of the Quickie website, was to catalog Chris's activities and to not directly interact with her or provide her with a platform to spread her beliefs. Klopp, the founder of the official Quickie server, then founded the server Quick Friends. Chiefly run by Not, the new server was a dedicated space for Christine or Sonachu to communicate with supposed fans, where people could offer their questions, which would be privately sorted through and directly messaged to Christine's account. The server was shut down less than a month after its inception, as Not had trouble managing the increasing numbers of antagonistic low-effort trolls and troublemakers, or weens. In the midst of this, Chris as Sonachu was frequently communicating with the enabling members of the The Place Discord, in addition to some fictional characters that were being portrayed by them, one of which was Lane Chu the Chronicler, created by Chris, inspired by the anime Serial Experiments Lane, allegedly introduced to her by Not. Lane Chu served to document Christine's activities in the Discord server and would occasionally disseminate information to the Quickie and Kiwi farms, as well as offer Chris and Sonachu words of support and guidance, mostly concerning the merge. Lane Chu was played as possessing the bodies of several of the play's members. Initially, the character spoke through Not, who then briefly passed into Klopp. In August, new The Place member Anaxis was instructed to take over the role of Lane Chu who spoke with Sonachu in public and private, as Sonachu was seeking advice about the coming dimensional merge. 
and Axis was coached by Knott how to respond, eventually learning to give him pseudo-philosophical words of guidance relating to the importance of patience and letting nature take its course, which Sonachu seemed to accept. Anaxis reasoned that even though he was enabling Christine to keep her comfortable and open to their input, he insisted that it was important to not offer her any new ideas and maintain her current belief system. On August 16th, the purported Sonichu posted on Twitter of his efforts in replacing Chris's broken air conditioner, attaching photos of Sonichu using her neckwear slash mask around her forehead to form a quote-unquote three-quarter do-rag. He then posted a photo of the newly installed AC unit in the window. On August 22nd, a Reddit user met Sonachu possessing Christine's body while in the gas station slash minimart sheets and posted a photo of the two together. Also on that day, Anaxis as Lainchu held a question and answer session with Christine as Sonachu after compiling a range of feasibly acceptable and interesting questions from several people. In regards to Chris's father, Bob, Sonachu wrote that Robert Chu was annoying for Chris, but still wise and intelligent, having his work greatly appreciated. Regarding Joshua Moon, or Null, the administrator of the QB Farms, Sonachu wrote that he and Chris felt neutral towards him, acknowledging all the help he had contributed, but was displeased with Null's disbelief in things quote-unquote fictional. Notably, when Lin Chu asked Sonichu if he had ever heard the song Baba O'Reilly by rock band The Who, the alleged Sonichu wrote, Heard it in a movie before. Sonichu quickly edited the message to read, Mama's heard it in a movie before. On August 26th, Chris's Twitter account blocked Jacob Sockness. Jacob then decreed that he could feel the light of God return to his house and the shadow of Satan descend into darkness after freeing from Chris. He added that he would be casting major spells on her, warning those living near her should move far away. Sockness would go on to his personal subforum or subreddit on the side reddit to elaborate that he also blocked Christine because it was clear to him that she was only faking her magical powers and was unable to assist him in the dimensional merge. Jacob was certain she would not be able to reach him again over social media. On August 27th, Chris announced through her Discord account to the place that Sonachu had stopped possessing her body and was now in control of the Christine Weston Chandler from Dimension 1214. Lane Chu took the opportunity to ask some questions, such as what were the major differences between Dimensions 1214 and 1218. Christine as Christine wrote that pop star Michael Jackson had released two more albums and lived some years longer in the alternate dimension. After answering a few questions, Chris told Lane Chu that it was not a good time for a Q&A, for her brain was fatigued after a very active day. The next day, after Sonichu apparently taken back control of Chris's body, the place members held an informal chat and question and answer session over Google Hangouts. Uh, what do you want to be remembered as and what do you think you will be remembered for? Well, she wants to be remembered as for who she is, uh, you know, with, uh, for her life so far and still ongoing. Uh, she's essentially living on forever and this body's living forever, by the way, you know that. Uh, but, but but she would probably want to be remembered as kind, positive person she always has been and is always meant to be, and uh, also that the also the literal goddess that she is. And yeah. then of course all her of course her art and books and all that. Yeah, somebody asked. Uh, you had to retire from the mayor mayorship of CWC Bill because it was too much responsibility. Are you sure you want to become a deity? It has a lot more responsibilities than being mayor. Okay. Well, that firstly, that fell on Christine Chen, Mama's uh, so counterpart in C one nine seven, and she li and she literally fell into that. And this goes along with the past uh, dislike of the LGBT where Christine Chan went forward in time to obviously an alternate timeline where they literally had come up with this uh, anti-gay serum that, and then she literally came back in time with that. Yeah, Amanda Chan just knew that that was coming and wasn't going to be able to stop Christine Chan from doing that. And, you know, she was about to 
essentially going to put in the water system, but then she got stopped by Magic Chen, and she had to resign from being mayor at that time. And aside from that, from all the other mm-hmm. all the other specimens of that particular substance that might have been brought back in time, were just essentially neutralized and properly disposed of. All of it. Huh. During this time, Chris or Sonichu nominated the Chandler's house to become a Pokestop within the augmented reality game Pokemon Go, which would enable players of the game to go to her house's location and collect in-game items. The nomination was quickly rejected. A couple of days later, QB Farms users noted that Chris's quick fill shopping website was down, but neither Chris nor Sonichu addressed the matter. On the final day of August, QB Farms user Unrequited Dog Pilings shared scans of court documents concerning Christine's trespass after forbidden charge in 2018, noting that she signed the documents with the name Chris Chan Sonichu, written in jagged lightning esque lettering. On September 2nd, Chris's two debt repayment cases were finalized, ruling that Christine was to pay back to the plaintiffs a combined total of between $3,500 and $4,000. At around this time, the alleged Sonichu sent text messages to Knott, revealing that the reason Sonichu and Christine were still in Dimension 1218 and not in C197 was because she needed Maker Night Fee and Knott to come live close to Chris's house in Rutgersville, Virginia so they could activate certain events. On September 3rd, Knott began posting on the QB Farms private messages and screenshots from Chris and Sonichu, writing that these correspondences were with quote-unquote Watchmen, a title given to the active members of the place, inspired by the 2009 film Watchmen. At this point, the identities and modus operandi of the Watchmen were unknown to the general Christian following public. On September 4th, Christine's YouTube account posted a short video starring her mother, Barbara, updating her audience of her condition so that people would not ask Sonichu about her state in his upcoming livestream. My name is Barbara Chen. I'm doing fine. What do you want to know? Ask questions in the comments below or wherever to my associates, yada yada. And come on, say something else. I don't know what else there to do. Uh, I'm doing fine. That's all I can say. Thank you for being interested. Soon after. Sonichu livestreamed himself reacting to part 4 of YouTube Brony cartoon series Red vs. Blue. We're gonna respond to Analysis Anarchy Part 4. It's pretty much a lot a bit of a wait right now, so everybody just relax, we're all good. I'll probably offer some thoughts along the way, just you know, randomly, whatever, yada yada yada. And all and all donations to the super chat are greatly appreciated, so Thank you. I have shower a little while ago, so that's why it looks like the hair is a little wet. Why? <sighs> You're seeing Rosie right here. Right here. Right here. She's right here sitting next to me. And you see me, like, you know, talking, talking lines and sink. So. I mean, that's good. I mean, that is more than enough good stuff for you, even regardless of the fact that, you know, it's all true. You know that. Everybody knows it. I know it. Feel it. Everybody feels it. Speak of which, if you could see my, if you could see the aura through this video, just, and everything else, then you're psychic and you're awesome. I'm doing a thing, doing a thing. Yeah, you've already seen Barb in the video that I just uploaded a few minutes ago, so you have no reason to ask about Barbara because that's her. She's okay, she's safe, she's well, and we're not, and she's not being held hostage either, so shut the hell up, you frickin' frickin' fucking haters. Wow, closer to the time than I thought. I mean, eight minutes to go. I'm just gonna leave a comment. 
How y'all doing, analysts? I am reasonably excited for part four. The previous parts have been very good. So good that I am literally watching them again. After having foreseen and watched in other timelines, many deja vus incoming. This whole buy, it's numb. It's been numb for months. It's been feeling numb for months. So, I ain't hurting. No pain. It's literally an immortal body that's staying alive for a long, long time. You know, like thousands of years and so on, or beyond that. Infinity. I get it. Stop it with the bar bean. I mean, stop making Barbara a meme, all right? That's enough. Stop talking about Barb. I don't know how to disable live chats from the phone or... I mean, is this it? Good. Shoot. Hooray. I don't have to look at him anymore. Ah, <sighs> so tired. I'm so tired. I mean, oh my gosh, Chad, why am I still here in this dimension? Why am I not in Quickville yet? Ah! Uh, I like that guy from the anime Erased. I mean, if that's going to happen, just a simple whoop, revive, turn around. I'm in Quickville. Instead of here. I'm in C197. Here. Instead of here. I'm, I'm right here. In the spot. In this room. And I'm going to say dimension as Rosie once again. I need to be the same dimension as Rosie. I'm trying to be the same dimension as Rosie. I'm just running a box speed. Oh, you don't know what I've rescued has been since the last, for the last six months. Uh, I was a simple Pikachu, and then I had to get bumped up, bumped. I had to get, no, I had to get collide with Super Sonic, Senpai with Senpai, and all that. Just, I was a wild Pokemon. Yeah. A form of power that afflicts its victims with pop culture powers most garish and cringy. But I had to make sure it worked. So I tried it on others. Cheers, love. The cavalry's here. <laughs> Quite. Nice. On September 7th, Sonichu, or Chris, instructed Not how to fulfill orders on her behalf whenever her fans would purchase her Twilight Sparkles secret Chipvic folder cards or Sonichu comic books, giving him access to her Google account and sharing with him names and addresses of the buyers. The next day, the Watchmen founded the Quick Questions Discord server, which was dedicated for Christian followers to submit their questions that would later be asked by Lane Chu to Chris or Sonichu. Lane Chu would go on to ask the supposed Sonichu a selection of questions over the following weeks, with Sonichu revealing the so-called most challenging artwork Chris had ever made, a drawing comprising of nine A4-sized pages taped together, depicting CPU Blueheart, the most prevalent Sonichu characters, and the CPUs from Hyperdimension Neptunia. Another time, he revealed the lyrics of the Michael Jackson song, Ride or Die, recorded by the artist in Dimension 1214, after the date he passed away in Dimension 1218. I'm getting older. I don't lie. I don't feel the age. I've got my wisdom, my faith. I'm a sage. Life is a stage. We play our parts, but in my life I stay young at heart. I've been up, down, and around. I'm not from this part of town. I've come from the hood of child. Their youthful antics are from the wild. It is a miracle to keep that mood when getting older's got you brood. Verse. I'm living my life in this later age. I'm a bit of a sage, but my youth keeps me wild and alive. Gotta stay young, because it's all ride or die. On September 13th, a Sonichu-focused Twitter account holder posted a photo of herself embracing her illustration of Sonichu. The supposed Sonichu using Christine's account wrote to her that a Sonichu that tall was very rare, as their species was typically 3 foot 5 inches tall. Soon after, Sonichu wrote a message in Chinese, Japanese, and Spanish, likely utilizing the Google Translate translation service, which roughly translated as, Listen, everyone around the world. Chris Chan Sonichu is our goddess and savior. 
She is going to right the remaining wrongs, as we coexist in the same dimension combined with all the fictional and original characters. He added that Christine, their goddess, could hear and speak all languages. Also on that day, a user on the DIY product focused merchant site Etsy complained on Christine's old Etsy storefront, noting that it had been three years since they ordered from Chris, but their order remained unfulfilled. It was around this time that Chris came in contact with a group of individuals based in Goochland County, Virginia, that would come to call themselves Prater, who planned to collaborate with her in producing Sonichu medallions and other Christian related merchandise on her behalf, with the aim of having their joint venture being financially beneficial for both parties. They first came to personally visit the Chandler's residence and handed Sonichu in Christine's body a Sonichu medallion with infused gold coloring they had crafted themselves. After at least one meeting over lunch, the supposed Sonichu gave them his and his mother's blessing to proceed with the opening of an online shop on Etsy and begin mass-producing medallions. On September 25th, one Justin, a buyer of two Sonichu comic books, texted Christine complaining that his order remained unfulfilled after a significant delay, having failed to hear back from her so-called partner handling the order. He threatened to sue the Chandlers and take them to court with the hopes of landing them in prison if Chris didn't respond with a plan to resolve the issue by 10.30pm of that night. The following day, after getting no response, Justin messaged her again, claiming he would take legal action that would lead to the demolishment of her house. Kristen responded, writing that she and her accomplices were going through a major grind of all the events, as her brain was psychically linked to everything. She explained that she was allegedly being helped by Null, along with other allies, to help with her back orders. Chris added that a refund for Justin could not be issued, as funds had been more than fickle around there, and told him to blame any further delays on Null. She expressed that she would not tolerate any more of his hate-filled trolling, and that he would get us comics when they would be ready. Justin went on to write in length that he was not a troll, and that he simply demanded what he paid $30 for, branding her a thief, and claimed that Christine would go to prison for not fulfilling his order and cause the Chandlers to lose their house. On September 28th, the alleged Sonature wrote through Christine's Twitter account that the Quickville shopping site had been closed for a while due to her inability to pay for the website hosting costs. He added that he was working with other unnamed friends and supposed allies that would be selling and producing on her behalf the Sonichu comics, custom Twilight Sparkles, secret chip fic folder cards, Sonichu medallions, and so on. Sonichu added that the COVID-19 pandemic had been most discordant with this dimension and timeline, but told Chris's followers to chillax. He continued that he did not appreciate a pinned post in the Christian subform on QB Farms, wherein Null tells readers to not buy anything from Christine. Sonichu closed by telling people to stop hating on them, since they were dealing with psychic and deity level problems that would be explained later on. The alleged Sonichu then posted new photos of Chris's Sonichu medallion hanging from her necklace, visibly warping on the surface and encrusted in possible grime. On September 30th, after Barbara received flowers from someone who claimed to be her son, the movie critic Cole Smithy, in commemoration of her upcoming birthday, Sonichu in response posted on Christine's YouTube account a video starring Barbara, directed at Chris's half-brother Cole. Hi Cole, thanks for the flowers, they're beautiful, that was very sweet of you, um, I remember all the uh, cards and letters that you mailed me when you were in college. I still have them and I still read them. It's so nice to, to be reminded of your love and support. Thank you very much. I love you. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Hey, Cole. Got a little message for you myself, brother. This is actually Sonichu. Yeah, the one and only prime of the Sonichu species from our sister dimension that's literally right next door to you. Hey, you've been hanging out next to Iron Man, literally. You've been hanging out with Iron Man and the Avengers and some of the DC heroes and everybody. But aside from that, I gotta tell you, Cole, 
all the stuff you pulled against Barb over these years, and I've heard, I've heard about through Mama's memory, because I only just swapped by with, with Mama, like, with Christine, like what, literally six months ago today, and I just have so many of my own shares of things and whatnot that I can solely speak to you, speak to you on her behalf. Got my own problems here, heart grief, yada, 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 I don't have a script. I'm not going on a script, but go. I'll give you this props. At least you came through on doing this nice thing for Barb in her later years, right before we're actually going on with the Dimension Merge, where you will literally be able to meet Iron Man, but also just to drive over to just to drive over to Jersey and literally meet Batman. So have fun knowing that, Joseph Cole Smithy, and uh, shoot, Zuzana. That's still a thing. And you know what? I'm just going to do what Mama did. Like, you know, hey, whoop de doo for him. Because she did that. And I just don't feel like I want to do that. Hey, you got married without inviting her and Barb. So there's that. Although I will say one thing on behalf of Mama. You're right about Barb on a number of things. And Mama was mistaken. Mama was mistaken. So there's that. She's learned. Mama, Barbara yelled at Mama, so there's that. Let you know about that. But it's a whole different kettle of fish. If you feel like you want to talk about this per personally, with, personally, feel free to call or text at uh, pretty much the phone number that's been popularized all over the internet. All right. Anyway, all the way here in Rutgersville, Virginia, in this dimension 1218, originating from C197. Thanks, Cole. Have a good day. On October 1st, Sonichu wished Barbara a happy 79th birthday on Chris's Twitter account. The next day, Sonichu received a set of Sonichu wire art from a DIY wire artist, thanking them publicly on Twitter. The artist in return expressed her happiness at meeting a fellow artist and creative soul, and sent a virtual hug to Chris's mother. Later on, the alleged Sonichu livestreamed his reaction to the premiere of Analysis Anarchy, Red vs. Blue, Part 5. It is a good angle anyway. If it's a bit lopsided, one way or the other, my bad, I got this thing on the body pillow. So let's, and also with that said, shout out with a happy birthday to Barbara. Her birthday was yesterday. She just turned 79 years old. So, toast to that. She should have quite a few more to go. And y'all get to see me eat a cupcake, so whoop de doo He proceeds to eat a cupcake on camera. Hmm. Ah, but this brain, this brain. If what, if, I feel like I want to talk about something else, but this brain can be a bit can be a bit slow at times, so it's like I'm in the process of one thought, and it's like another thought comes along. I, I don't know, and then it just draws a blank. Yeah. Oh yeah, well I guess um, one thing I can talk, another thing I can talk about is uh, yeah, dimension merged. It's still happening. It's happening. It's continuing its progress. You're see, you're seeing everything happen. One moment at a time, literally, and I am speaking, yeah, and the Chris Chan and all other deities. But yeah, essentially to just be like, hey, hey, what's the dimension merge about? Well, I, mean, it's, I mean, shoot, didn't Mama go through it enough already on Twitter and Facebook and whatever about months to a year ago or something, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but long story short, we OCs and FCs, that's original characters, the fictional characters that y'all consider to y'all been chronicling, drawing, writing about, yada, yada, yada. We all exist and coexist. Right next to y'all, through a dimensional curtain divide, curtain divide that's invisible for the most part, but you can sense it. Only select few are going to be as sensitive as that. But at least obviously not a living receiver because I'm very conscious and aware of it all. Because, I mean, Mama's been very conscious aware. And then, guess what? Literally, 
over six months now. It turned six months just two days ago on the 30th of September. Six months! I've been here for six months! I've been in this body for six months! Since Mama and I swapped last March. But yeah, essentially, all right, so all of us are over there, y'all over here. Y'all chronicle us, and we even chronicle all of you. I feel a burp coming on. Excuse me. Just had some veggies. Uh, I hate it when this brain goes blank. <laughs> Noise. The medic duo of Doc and Brian. Uber up the dog! Meatballs! Meatballs! It's the dragon sir! Possibly in response to the reactions in the stream, Sonichu posted a Twitter poll asking Chris Chan followers whether they would be interested in reading a written Bible of sorts regarding the dimensional merge, with a large majority voting in its favor. Soon after the announcement, an unknown enabler via text message encouraged Chris to proceed to write a Bible based on her existence, laws, and prophecies to counteract the slanderous writings posted on the Quickie and Kiwi farms. They added that they envisioned the scripture would serve great importance after the dimensional merge. During this time, a college student of around 18 years of age on the autism spectrum, who would be referred to as the Sutras, was developing a well-known reputation on the Quickie Discord server for her supposed infatuation with Chris, after making frequent posts regarding Chris's attractiveness and sex appeal, perhaps being perceived as ironic. However, she would soon confess to friends and on online message boards that she had gotten true desirous feelings for Chris. In early October, Quickie Discord moderator Anaxis privately messaged the Sutras upon learning that she had contacted Christine's phone to at least send her a drawing she had made, in addition to possibly chatting with her as well on separate occasions. Anaxis warned her about contacting Chris since it was against the rules of the server, telling her not to do so again lest she face more serious consequences. On October 5th, a Reddit user posted a photo of Chris's body driving the family car while in the Ruckersville area. On the 8th, Sonichu, while in possession of Christine's body, drove to Pennsylvania to return a box of over 50 items that was sent by one Luke that were to be autographed by Chris. Luke in return paid her $190, mostly for her travel expenses. He would go on to resell the items on the online marketplace, Mercury, under the false pretense that the items had been owned by Chris Chan. At Luke's house, the two ended up playing the video game Super Smash Bros. Ultimate together. After leaving his home, Sonichu then drove to the last known address of Transformers-focused toy review YouTuber MGO316 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, for an unsolicited visit to offer him some gifts and to meet with a friend of his who supposedly possessed psychic senses. MGO had in fact sold the residence to a Spanish-speaking woman, who wound up opening the door for Sonichu and explaining to him the situation. Also at around this time, Sonichu recounted a dream he had with the Watchmen, which consisted of a large golden disc that Sonichu believed could be the key to breaking through the Iron Curtain and allowing him back into his dimension of C-197. In the coming days, mostly with the help of the The Place member, Kyle, Sonichu drew the golden disc divided into different sections and inscribed with symbols taken from the Zodiac, the Japanese Samurai Moral Code of Bushido, Pokemon, and Sonic the Hedgehog. Also during this time frame, Sonichu revealed the front cover for the unfinished comic Sonichu issue 17, depicting Christine dressed in her Gopnik attire, accompanied by her supposed spouses, Magichan Sonichu and Krizel Rosechu. On October 13th, Isabella Loretta Janke, or Bella, a longtime follower of Chris Chan, masqueraded as an employee of subscription video streaming service Curiosity Stream, offering Christine a chance to appear on an upcoming podcast episode focusing on people with autism in collaboration with Discovery Channel Ficology. 
Bella offered Chris a payment of $30 per 1,000 views and added that their program would typically get 20 to 30,000 views. It is unclear whether Christine responded to the email. Bella was also known to be at the time a member of Onion Farms, a Kiwi farm style lol cow focused website created by former Christian follower and enabler Kenneth Engelhart, where she was temporarily banned for offering to sell the private information or docs of other users of the site. On October 15th, Sonichu revealed to members of the The Place Discord server that he was handwriting a script for a supposed sermon that was to be recorded the following day by members of the organization Praetor. Caden, the leader of the Praetor group, was then invited to join The Place, where they discussed their future merchandising plans with Chris and Sonichu. While conversation remained amicable, the watchmen were quietly suspicious of Praetor's true intentions thinking it possible that Praetor would take advantage and manipulate Chris. On October 16th, the supposed Sonichu met with members of Praetor at a meeting room in Goochland Public Library, where they took a series of promotional photos that were posted on the photo-based social platform Instagram. The private accounts of most of the members were also tagged in the photos, which allowed for Christian followers to uncover their true identities. They also recorded a video sermon presented by Sonichu, standing behind a podium with a projected background. Prater, who edited the video, occasionally added overlaid annotation text throughout, which communicated a sarcastic and trollsome tone regarding their belief in Sonichu's words. The video sermon was published at a later date. Ah, uh, hey everybody, Sancha here, still in Mama's body for like since for like six months since she and I body swapped. Ah, uh, but anyway, so I wrote my own little speech to talk about updates that happened since when Mama originally talked about the dimension merge. It's still in progress. Emotion and heart and everything is in there. So let's get down to it. So let me see. Let's talk about the communities and what y'all in 1218 here can and should do. Anyway, so most everyone has prepared their evac kits, taken up survival and outdoor learning from various books and educational videos, etc. And in each country and city, they have their plans made out and distributed. They distributed pamphlets on those. Even President Herbert Garrison, who's pretty much Donald Trump's self counterpart, freaking Trump. <laughs> ah, Garrison called the, called the prep work plans in order. Thank deities, we do not have your freaking pandemic in see when I said social distance. Orders. God, I'm a mess and shit. I mean, geez, I can't wait to get back to see when I said with this body. <laughs> More and more portals and breaks have been appearing and manifesting around the world and throughout the galaxies of the Iron Curtain between our dimensions. And some have safely and successfully traversed to the other dimension and back. Everyone who has perished so far, meeting Mama's estimates respectively, have safely merged and awakened in their self counterparts, bodies, brains, and consciousness. The tallied numbers of individuals in C197 who are confirmed of waking up here to be in the millions. Also, we have confirmed buildings and objects fully transitioning into the other dimension from the other side, such as Gotham City in C197 has seen buildings from this dimension appear on the outskirts around them. The temples in Saudi Arabia crumbled in C197, and your temples appear to replace them. And I can go on with Notre Dame and all of the California that burned in favor of those cities from C197 into 1218, including Elmore. The OG Rishi Ram was doing a bang up job and bringing on the firestorms here. Uh, but fortunately, in combination between both the next dimensions, most everyone got out of the transitioning buildings and survived. The combined number of deaths by becoming stuck 
in fading in walls, floors, and so on, we're only, just over only 10 people. Just that, 10. I was also aware of Mama in 1218. I've never acted against either of them. All of them, freaking idea guy and his damnable villain of it powers. Put a major pain on our earth and equestria in C197. This damn freaking Nazis. Manipulating the CPUs with his freaking OC Johnson Wiles, soldier of war and whatever. Ha! What a freaking manipulator. I'm just kick his ass all over the place. And idea guy just, he got into my brain and turned me against her. It was freaking horrible. And Mama had not ever stopped being kind with me, but I was so blinded and I, as I had threatened her. And then she got tough love with me, just broke me out, put me back on the back to myself. Oh boy, a world's of relief when she finally used her ether to undo all the idea guys' chaos in C-197. I've also traversed and visited other planets, dimensions, and timelines with Rosie by myself or with Magic Chan or whoever for additional tech resources and useful supplies. We definitely certainly got good help despite his freaking retarded list but not enough from freaking Jacob Sockness and this freaking link with Jacoba on Andromeda. Uh, but at least we have our allies that are us outside of that freaking OG Oedipus of a thing, whatever. <laughs> uh, but then finally the big moment. Magic Chan told me as much as possible of the upcoming body swap that I was going to do between Mama and I. Come March 31st, crack out, zapping it up to the extreme. Here I was, and still am, over six months now. I tell you all, sincerely, directly, and very clearly as possible, the majority of you all can hardly ever comprehend the genuine overpower, abilities, endurance, fortitude, and overall strength and speed this one body and brain literally has. So many visions, so many deja vu moments, telepathy, telekinesis, and so on to every power all of you can think of in this dimension, and then some. No exaggerations, and no lies either, I tell you. And the powers of this body and this brain have become easier to utilize. It also goes off in massive aura energy, glowing. Look at all this glow around me. If you could, if you all could see this through the video, you are psychically, spiritually awesome. This body and brain are literally working, doing intermensionally and goddessly traversing tough, rough, and hard every single millisecond. And I assign you have tried and kept on and continuing on until that day in the new pandemic-free version of this, the Omega timeline, because I'm going back in time with this body after I get back into C197, finally return this body to Mama in the new timeline at BabsCon 2020. How many will I sign you? Am I able to do Mama's job as good as only she, our OG Christine Weston Chandler, sign you of Earth's 1218 and C197 can do? This work, her body, her brain, her goddess level overpowers and abilities they're all literally tailored and custom made only for her. I never should have ever doubted her. I sincerely pledge and repledge my duty, loyalty, and best of myself, my powers and abilities to her now and after when she and I swap back to our original bodies in a new timeline. All praise, prayers, and power to our goddess of 1218 and C197, Christine Weston Chandler's sonnet show.